Good morning and welcome to the Lord's house today. This is a glorious day to be here together with a video. Uh, it's the fifth Sunday in Lent and we're ever getting closer to Easter. It's the second Sunday though of this COVID-19 video church. So we'll see how much longer this lasts. We pray it will be short so that we can come together. We also pray that you're all safe and, and, uh, and healthy this day and, and the days to come. Our service for today is Divine Service to Setting 3, found on page 184 of your hymnal. Or you could uh, grab uh, the bulletin that we emailed out to you or have on our Facebook page. Uh, you can print that off and it's fully printed for you. It's a fully printed bulletin, so everything is in it that you need. But for those of you who are using the hymnal, we've also done something new today. We've added a song. Not really new, but uh, I'm going to point you in the direction that you need to go. Uh, in the front of the hymnal, before the services, we're going to be at Psalm 130, so you'll just open up your hymnal to Psalm 130, and that's where we'll read it responsibly. I will start, and then it'll be whole verse by whole verse. So that's a little new thing for you. So blessing on your hearing and blessing on your receiving God's word today. Uh, we now begin with our opening hymn, hymn 423, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary, hymn 423. to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And we take a moment for silent reflection on God's word and for our self-examination. Father, I, a poor, miserable 
miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of a holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this short confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live, and I will lay sins upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them. The skin had covered them, and there was no breath in them. But he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. And then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. We will now read responsibly from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now please rise as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill. Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. 
So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. And she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to be there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid them? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an ogre, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God, who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We now turn to page 10 in our bulletin, if you have that with you, as we use the words of the Nicene Creed to confess our faith, which we confess in communion with all the saints. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Be God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, be God to not be, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation. 
salvation came down from heaven and was inspired by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiping and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated uh, for the children's message, and we will prepare for the children's message by singing stanza one and its refrain to number hymn number five eighty eight. Jesus loves me. Five eight. Good to have you with us here at St. Paul, and I can see you and hope that you're going to gravitate to your screens right now and get close so you can hear this little lamb's message. I got something. I brought something from home today. I don't know if you guys can know what that is. Any guesses? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It is a, it's a cake pan, and you make cakes in a cake pan, so I'm thinking of, of making a 10-layer cake, you know, with all the frosting and all the stuff in there, but the problem is there's no cake in there, is there? How am I gonna make that? Hmm, wouldn't it be nice if I could just snap my fingers and there would be a cake? Not so much working, is it? Well, in our story today, something happened. In the story from Ezekiel, we heard about Ezekiel being called by God to, to go to some dry bones, some bones out in the, in the, in the in the valley, and he told them, and he told Ezekiel that he was gonna use him to raise up these dry bones, speak to these bones so that they may live. And, and Ezekiel spoke the word of God over the bones, and guess what? And they came back to life, just like that. You know, God made that thing happen. Kind of reminds us of uh, the creation. Remember when God created the world, he said, let there be light, and snap, there was light. And everything that he created, he said, let there be, and snap, it happened. So what a great understanding that God can do anything that he desires, especially when it comes to, to us. So I guess you know that I was just kidding about being able to snap my fingers and make a cake, because I'm not God, I can't do that. Uh, but God does speak to us uh, and allows us to speak to other people the gospel of his son, Jesus Christ. And guess what? Snap, just like that, things happen. When we get to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ to other people and our friends, the Holy Spirit comes. It's a promise that whenever we speak his word, bang, the Holy Spirit's gonna come and do his work and, and try to work faith in the hearts of whoever we speak to. And then there's the other times when, when the pastor says, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? Snap, just like that, it is forgiven because that's what God says it does. His word does what it says. And at the same time, when God says, uh, uh, I will give you eternal life in the new creation, well, guess when our last day comes, bang, snap like that, we will be with God uh, where he is in that eternal joy. His word is powerful. 
and it does what it says it's going to do. So we want to keep an eye on God's word and hear the amazing things that God has in store for us through his son, Jesus Christ, especially forgiveness, especially the joy of being brothers and sisters in Christ. And maybe someday we'll make a cake together. Uh, I highly doubt it uh, because I'm not a good cake decorator and such, but we can talk about Jesus all you like. So we would have a great time there too. So I, I pray that you have a great day and you can all go back to your couches now, uh, but let us pray. Heavenly Father, you made wonderful things happen for your people throughout history. Please keep speaking to us so that we may see how your powerful word always does what it promises through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue now with our hymn of the day. Hymn 498, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed. Hymn 498. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today's sermon is taken from our Old Testament reading in Ezekiel chapter 37. And the sermon is entitled, Take a Breather. Do you often think about your breath? Do you oftentimes think about breathing? 
Now I know because of this COVID-19 virus, you may be paying a little bit more attention to your breathing. I know that those for a fact because for a few days early on in the pandemic, I would wake up in fear and terror almost every morning because I snore. And sometimes this snorer wakes up and my throat is scratchy and it's hard to breathe and it feels like it's the onset of a cold and maybe even a virus. But thanks be to God, it is just snoring. But it makes you stop and think about breathing. Every single time that you inhale, things are happening. Our diaphragm is contracting and, and moving down to make space in our chest cavity for the increase of that volume of air that's coming in. The lungs then expand and the air is pulled in and, and with the help of a fancy protein called a hemoglobin, oxygen goes into our bloodstream. Then, while all this is going on, carbon dioxide is moved to the lungs and then it is forced out when we exhale. The whole thing is, is really amazing. And there are hundreds more details that I can bring up about breathing, but I'll leave those out for now. Except for this one. Given the fact that every person, or the average person, takes about 23,000 breaths per day, it's no wonder we should check in on our breathing from time to time. In our text today, God shows the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel a vision that, that, that makes quite a dramatic show of how important the simple act of breathing is. Here in our text, it brings the resurrection of the whole army of Israel. Ezekiel envisions those who are not just dead, but they were bones. And now he witnesses them fully bodied, fully in flesh, and physically breathing again. But he's also seeing what breath can mean spiritually. And this is definitely a play on words, and, that, and that's intended, and it'll come up later on in the sermon. But ultimately, of course, Ezekiel's vision is a picture of what Jesus does for us. Jesus gives us the breath of the resurrected life. God's people have not been breathing that well. Not very well at all. We've been taken in a lot of brokenness. And it shouldn't surprise us at all. We are born into a sin-broken world, and therefore our breathing is broken. Our breathing doesn't work the way it should all the time. So many people are living with COPDs nowadays, emphysema, lung cancer, asthma, pneumonia, <laughs> pneumonia, and now even this COVID-19 virus. We inhale, take in all sorts of things that harm us physically. Smoking and vaping, drugs, alcohol, extreme thrill-seeking, too much food. Too much sitting. We inhale. We take in all sorts of things that harm us spiritually. Coveting, desiring, greeting, and greeting for all things. That new vehicle, that new house, uh, the corner office where the big bucks are made. And while we're at it, how about a, a new and better looking spouse or one that doesn't complain so much or one that, that does everything that I'm telling them to do. You know, like the ones that you see on TV or in those, in those novels that we read. Or coveting health. Coveting surviving. In actuality, this kind of breathing has dried us up to the core. The people of Israel were also breathing in all the wrong things from their time in history. They worshipped idols made of wood and metal instead of Yahweh. They breathed in the allure of the false teachings that surrounded them and gave them false hope. They desired more land and more animals, more food, more wine, and less time with their God. Not much different than now. 
Israel's broken breath has resulted in their destruction and captivity in Babylon. And now God gives Ezekiel a vision of what that means for them spiritually. It's as if they are breathless, very dry bones indeed. Ezekiel was forced to take a good look at the situation. Just as God's law now forces us to take a close look at our own world-desiring sinful condition. And when we are truly looking at ourselves, we have to acknowledge. We have to admit. And maybe this would be a better word that we would use. We have to confess. We have to confess that we have been taking into our nostrils the breath of death. Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are indeed cut off. On our own, we are deep down in the lowest places that we could be. Lying lifeless in Ezekiel's valley of dry bones, the valley of death. But a breath of life is on the way. And it begins with the word of the Lord. The Hebrew writer reminds us that the word is active and living. And where the word is, there is also the spirit of God. And here is the play on words. And it comes in right here in our text. For the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach. Can you guess what the Hebrew word for breath is? Yeah, Ruach. So now then when we hear verse 9, we hear the double word play. Prophesy to the breath, Ruach. Prophesy to the spirit. Prophesy, son of man, and say, breathe. Ruach. Say to the spirit, breathe. Thus says the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and one more time, Ruach. O spirit, and breathe on these slain that they may live. Because when God's spirit is given, there is life. Yahweh says, I will cause breath, Ruach, to enter you and you shall live. I will put my spirit, my Ruach, within you and you shall live. The word and the spirit gives us back breath of life that we lost in the fall. Notice it's just like the way God created Adam. First he formed him out of the ground, out of nothing, and then he breathed into him the breath of life. So now God's people, so now God calls his people to take a breather. And remember, Jesus gives us the breath of resurrected life. In the Gospel reading, Jesus speaks, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus receives a new breath of life at the command of God. This work of Jesus was to show many things, but here it shows his power over death. In fact, Jesus prophesied about the glory of the last day when he says, An hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear Jesus' voice and come out. The breath that Jesus gives recreates both body and soul. Remember how very physical the resurrection was that Ezekiel saw. The breath that Jesus gives reaches even to those who are in the grave. The breath of resurrected life happens because Jesus gave up his perfect breath on the cross. From the Gospel of Luke, we hear Jesus at his crucifixion. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And saying, and having said this, he breathed out his last. And then on Easter morning, there was the resurrected Christ living, breathing, eating, and having the fullness of God in the flesh of the Christ. Now this breathing of resurrected life is given to you, 
given to us every time the word of God is read or spoken. For the word of God is given. The Holy Spirit automatically comes to do his work in you. Automatically comes to do his work to point you to Christ, to call you to Christ. This life-giving spirit is given to you in your baptism. Remember that you have been baptized into Christ, whom is the Word made flesh, and His Word is spoken over you and to you to give you life. In the divine services, we confess our sins, and by the grace of God, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, the words of forgiveness are spoken over you, spoken to you. And it is true forgiveness from God because he says so. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, 23, Jesus says, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Period. So now, as we take in the preaching of God's word, there's something going on here. There is a killing and making alive that goes on. The proclaimed word first kills our sins and our false hopes, thus making us slain ones. The false hopes that possessions will make you truly happy. The false hopes that your idols of money and strength and health or the government are going to save you from death. The false hope that just because you are a Christian, nothing bad can happen to you. The false hope that this life right now it's the best it gets. Repent of these breathless things. Repent of these spiritless things. And God in Christ, by the power of His Spirit, will forgive you and make you alive again. Give true life to you now and a life that will lead to eternal life. A life that raises from the dead to the glory of the Father in the new creation. With his breath in you, with his spirit in you, God sees you as already raised up with Christ in the heavenly places from Ephesians 2, 6. This is our sure confidence and hope because if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through that spirit who dwells in you. Romans 8. Breathing is a big deal. And today God calls us to receive the breath, the spirit, the resurrected life that comes only from Jesus. So take a breather. In him is a breath for the weary and heavy laden. In him is a breath for the fearful and crushed in spirit. In him is a breath for the despised and the lowly. The breath he gives enters the deepest darkness of our, of our dying lives and can and will refresh you beyond all understanding. Yes, in Jesus is a breath of life that extends beyond, beyond the COVID-19 virus and beyond the grave. So breathe easy, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And we pray. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understandings, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Please rise as we speak the offertory together. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a bright spirit within me. Cast ye not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me.
Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. We pray. We come, O Lord, with the dry bones of our broken hopes and disappointed dreams. Find us up in Christ, that we may learn to pray with confidence, trusting in your mercy to supply us with all things needful to us and to our salvation. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by placing your Spirit upon them. Join us together with the communion of saints in Christ, even though we must for a time stand apart. Raise us up from our weariness and grant us your Spirit, that we may be strong in faith, bold in witness, holy in life, and steadfast in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, your Son has given us the new birth of water and the word and plant of faith in us, that we might be your own children. Bless your church, supply her with able, fearless, and caring pastors to nurture us in your word. Raise up faithful, faithful fathers and those who will teach and pray in your name in every Christian household. Keep your church in your mercy, that she may believe without fear and love, without limit to even them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all destruction, especially from this deadly pandemic, and teach us to be patient and faithful citizens of this land, using ourselves and our resources wisely for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, merciful Lord, your Son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion, patience, and endearance to all who suffer in us, who are troubled in mind. For whose time on earth is short. Spare us from death now, but give us courage and comfort far stronger by your power over death. Eternal God, who carry the grief of those who mourn and remember all who die in Christ, give comfort to the grieving and peace to the dying, and give that same comfort and peace to us who live in the shadow and fear of death, that we would neither live nor grieve as people without hope, but trust in you. Hear all our prayers, especially on behalf of Earl, Judy, Tom, Terry, Dennis, and Carla, and for all those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, gracious God, you daily and richly grant us all things we need for this body and life. Bless our labors and grant us wisdom to use the fruits of, the, of those labors wisely and well. For the care of our families, for, for the poor and their needs, and for the support of your work in this congregation. Preserve us from fear and greed as we live and work among you, and turn us instead in love for our neighbors, however distant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God and Almighty, through your Son you have kept the promise of the ages and rescued us from sin. You have raised up the dry bones of the people captive to death and made us alive in Christ forever. Sustain us in this hope, that we may endure the tests, trials, and troubles of this life, and be ready when, when our Savior comes again in his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear us as the Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Congregation, you can see it as we sing our closing hymn.
Number 506, Glory be to God the Father. Number 506. Thanks be to God. 